Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokesh. I am here with Libertarian National Chair candidate Joshua Smith. And I have to say, I have been very impressed having traveled the country, going to as many state conventions as I have as possible this spring. And he's been at almost every single one. I have yet to see anybody who cares as much about this party put the legwork in for a race like this as I have with him. And to see how he has really just stepped up to connect to the party and make sure that he is able to represent the party well and bring new energy and life into the national leadership, it is a beautiful thing to see. Josh, tell us about this race and, and what you've learned traveling the country talking to libertarians. Yeah, man, I, you know, the craziest thing I've learned is that there's a different culture in every state. <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty cool, and there's a different libertarian. Even within the a different libertarian yeah, yeah. culture. There's a different libertarian culture in every state. And, 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 you know, the most interesting thing to me is being able to shake hands with the delegates, you know, um, and find out what it is that they want from a national leadership structure. You know, they, we always hear about this stuff coming out of national, but we never hear about what the delegates want. What do they want to see? You know, what are their fears and their worries and their hopes? And so that's, I mean, that's been the coolest part of this traveling is just shaking hands, trying to win hearts and minds, finding out what, what people want to see and, and trying to institute that into my, my platform and make sure that we, we keep everyone happy. So. so what are the biggest things you think people want to see change in the national leadership? Uh, the number uh, Aside from uh, no death threats to school board members, right? right? right. That's little, a, little Arvind Vorha that's reference cool. there. That's a big one. Yeah, I mean, th there's a lot of people that are really upset with uh, the messaging from national leadership, obviously. And that, that you know, that goes... Wait, wait, are you trying to say that libertarians don't want the national leadership reaching out to anti-gun high school kids? No, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And We're praising them for being anti-gun protesters. Right. No, that's a bad idea. Well, okay. I, I think the biggest problem with that, that specific meme that you bring up was that there was a deviation from, um, from principle there. Uh, you know, Nicholas was really quick to call out the Tiki Torch Taliban for marching to have state force take away our rights. But when kids did it, to march to take away state, to use state force to take away rights, it was lauded. So I think that's, you know, a lot of people were really upset that, about that. A lot of people were upset about Arvind Vohr's messaging. But the number one thing that I hear is that the activists, the hardworking ground level grassroots activists of this party want a national leadership team that is going to reflect their activism. And they don't see that. And that's their biggest fear. And I know as a grassroots activist guy that if I get the right team and I surround myself with the right people, we can bring that to the delegates. So, Well, I mean, I, I have all sorts of specific disagreements that I could raise about Nick and, you know, uh, running meetings in ways that manipulate the outcomes of certain things or the kind of bad messaging that we discussed uh, or, or actually saying that it's good that we don't spend money as a party, that we don't raise and spend money effectively or that the things that I've seen him do personally in Arizona opposing a resolution to oppose uh, uh, child abuse and trying to keep delegates out of the process, like actively discouraging participation in the Libertarian Party. And I, I don't want to make personal accusations, uh, but from what I see, it, it's the sort of behavior you would expect out of the, the petty tyrant who's more concerned about keeping his position of power than actually doing what's right for the party and the movement. But one of the things I'm really excited about the possibility with you as chair is that you have the time and the energy and the motivation to put into taking advantage of this platform. So like when we endow someone with the title chair of the National Libertarian Party, they get a platform with that. They get the ability to go out and do interviews and, and, and just the lack of engagement from Nick taking advantage of that, that is really disappointing. What are you going to do to take advantage of that platform? Yeah, I've talked pretty extensively about that. I, I, I really, really, really want to see a national libertarian podcast run from our, our media hub. You know, we have 800,000 followers. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a podcast, Adam, but if you had started at the ground level with 800,000 followers, you'd be competing with Adam Carolla, you know, and that's a, that's a great way. You know, the podcasts are huge right now. You know, you start with a base like that and you're going to you're going to take it far. I really want to have a national media hit squad. I want four people corners of the country ready to send on media opportunities like much like what we had in Alabama with uh, the, the Ron Bishop campaign. It was a writing campaign in Alabama, a state where we don't have ballot access. He's running against Roy Moore and the country singer. Uh, we get a record number of write-in votes and for the first time ever the state of Alabama turns blue. Maybe in history. And uh, we put out a meme and a reminder to vote. That's all we did. You know, it was a special election. We didn't have anything else to focus on. So I want to have a media hit squad that's ready to send on these opportunities. we got to get in front of the media. They have no vested interest in libertarian principles whatsoever because they know at the end of the day we're fighting against, you know, the corruption that we see everywhere. And so they feed off that. 
So they, they don't have a vested interest. We have to get in front of the media. So yeah, absolutely that. Um, you know, I want to run omni-channel marketing campaigns for our candidates. I want to I help try and get our local and state candidates into those positions, grassroots, you know, activism, get them into those positions and let them affect change. Let them start rolling back the size and scope of intrusive government in their, you know, their town or their city or their county or their state. So yeah, absolutely. Media is very, very important right now. It's, it's the digital age. Now, I got to hand it to the Libertarian Party of Oklahoma because I was there not just for their wonderful Oklahoma caucuses, but also for giving Josh the test, the trial. I mean, it was I, like, yeah, I was, I, I mean, this is uh, not surprising to see this in the Libertarian Party, but he was showing up uh, doing his doing his campaign, just wanted to reach out to people, you know, give a stump speech and, and talk about what he wants to do about the party. And 15 minutes before the convention that started, they said, all right. You want to be chair of the national party? You're going to chair the state convention right now. No prep whatsoever. And he stepped up and did an amazing job. So someone who's got the chops, who's got the energy, who's got the enthusiasm. Josh, i got to end with a hard question. Yep. Is taxation theft? You're damn right. <laughs> Joshua Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.